inspired one. We are focusing on animal research and learning a lot about animals. And one of the words that we're talking about is adaptations. And for animals to survive and for humans to survive, we have had adaptations. So those are special features that animals have to help them survive in the wild, to help them stay warm, to help them warn off predators and to keep them safe. Now this story is called Lots of Spots by Lois Ellert and she has been writing stories for a long time. You might recognize this kind of artwork from Chicka Chicka Boom Boom and she also wrote this story called Planting a Rainbow which I'm going to be sharing as well. But in this story called Lots of Spots, it's a bit of a rhyming book, but it also brings attention to different animals and what their adaptations are to keep them safe, to be camouflaged, to blend in, why they might have spots and look the way they do. So let's focus on some animal adaptations as we share Lots of Spots by Lois Ellert. School of Fish Spots and stripes, when fish swim together, tend to confuse a hungry predator. So a predator is the animal that hunts the um, specific animal. So fish would have lots of predators depending on where they live. Skate. Flip-flop swims the skate, blending with ocean floor. Digesting the shrimp it ate, it hides and waits for more. So this would be the skate right here, living on the bottom of the ocean. Eel. Like water bubbles, its spots conceal the devious movements of an eel. Flounder. A flounder is a flatfish, a pancake with eyes topside. It can change its colors when it wants to hide. Kind of like a chameleon. That's neat. Toad. When a toad jumps in the air, it shows off spotted underwear. Some animals will stay away from specific colors or spots thinking it might be poisonous. Turtle swimming spots are revealed. Turtle sunning spots are concealed. Mm, so it can hide its spots. Chameleons can alter, alter the colors of their skin to camouflage the spot they're in. So alter means change. What's really cool about her artwork too is that she takes paper and she layers it on top. So she would have cut out these um, different shapes and designs to make them symmetrical like that. Use different scissors to create the, the edge and then she layers the paper to create the animals. Iguana. Look at all the detail in that artwork. Why won't mama let me get this iguana for a pet? Its spots won't blend, she declares, with our couch and flowered chairs. I don't think your parents want you to have an iguana in your house either. If a snake shakes its rattle, shake a leg and skedaddle. So that's an adaptation that the rattlesnake has to warn off predators, to warn off us. When we hear that rattle, we certainly don't want to be around. And this is a time of year when they're definitely coming out as things warm up. Lots of dens in the coolies and near the university, so you do need to be careful when you're in those areas. When a snake's high strung, it sticks out its tongue. So when they're angry, when they are feeling like they need to protect, careful. Lizards slither, hither and thither. Hearing a cheery chickadee dee identifies the birds you see. I know when we've been down at Helen Schuler, um, they'll make us practice that chickadee dee dee. Robin, speckle throated robin, chirps and cocks its head, waiting for a worm to crawl out of its bed. Lots of robins around our house right now. Goldfinch. When the weather's warm and mellow, a goldfinch turns from dull to yellow. 
so brighter colors coming out in the summer would um, make it safer for the goldfinch to have its brighter yellow colors. An oriole. Does an oriole love oranges best because the color matches its breast? Blue jay. I had a blue jay fly into my front yard last week and I, I don't see them very often. I was pretty excited. When a blue jay calls JJJ, the sound is the same as its name. Red-winged blackbird, red and yellow patches on each wing. Red-winged blackbird, signs of spring. I've seen quite a few of those as we've been going around Nicholas Sharon. How much wood would a woodpecker wreck if a woodpecker would peck a wood deck? Have you heard any woodpeckers? We've seen them in our backyard. Peck, 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 peck. And pecking on our house too. A wood duck. Striped head, eyes of red, that's a wood duck male. Eye spots on head instead, that's a pale female. Oh, how to tell the difference between a, a female and a male. A loon. I love the sound loons make. It's distinctive, you can't mistake loon spots and stripes out on a lake. If a woodpecker would peck holes in a wood deck, the whole deck, I suspect, would be wholly wrecked. Spotted owl. Unless there's a girl owl and he's in pursuit, a boy owl generally won't give a hoot. A flicker? Rapid tap tap. That's a flicker sound. Tattooing on tree bark where insects abound. So that's how they're getting their food out. That would be an adaptation. Their long beak that can tap in and be almost like digging for insects for food. Goose. Migrating goose. Fly in versus I wonder where they catch some Z's. Oh, Miss Craddock versus fly in V's. Hello, migrating geese fly in V's. I wonder where they catch some Z's. That makes sense. So I read that, it didn't make sense at all. I was reading that as the wrong words, so I went back and reread. That's a good reading strategy. If it doesn't make sense, go back and try again. A toucan. Toucans looking for a bird of similar bill and feather so the two can live happily together. So that's how they would find their mate, looking for another bird that has similar, co similar coloring. A macaw. A gaudy macaw is so conspicuous trying to hide would be ridiculous. So it's not very easy for this macaw to blend in with all its bright colors. A barn owl. One barn owl can catch more mice and rats than a whole family of mouse or cats. They're great hunters. A pheasant. Ring around the neck, long straight tail. Pheasant strides and hides on the brushy trail. The roadrunner is a big cuckoo, but in a road race it might beat you. They can run really fast. Get away from those predators. When a turkey gobbles, its warty waddle wobbles. And a crowned crane, a top a crown, a top crane's head, long neck beneath, there is a crown, a feathered wreath. A Humboldt penguin, orange streak near its beak, this penguin is unique. Frogs, color spots worn, these frogs taste icky, don't eat them or you'll get sticky, kind of like our other toad we were talking about, how their colors would warn off predators. Panda, same black eye spot, same stripe near tummy. Baby panda looks like dad and mummy. I heard at the Calgary Zoo that they had to send the pandas back because there wasn't enough bamboo. Badger, masked badger, a nightmare nighttime digger, excavates burrows with great vigor. They're big diggers with these big claws. There's no dispute, goat's face is cute, but its horns can hit right where you sit. Mm. A Dalmatian. Dalmatian's got lots of splotchy spots. Sure do. And an animal lizard. Lizard dressed up and wants a date, hoping to spot a future mate. Spotted cow eats and by and by produces white milk and brown cow pies. They're poop. 
dappled spots conceal newborn deer as the fawn grows their spots disappear so these spots help keep the baby safe if you're choosing to do your research about deer that's an adaptation that the babies have those white spots to help keep them safe and camouflaged a moth's flight awaits moonlight hmm why do we only see moths really at night they're drawn to the light Butterfly spots look like big eyes to scare the birds. It's a disguise mm, to make them look like something they're not. Running blur of spotted fur. You can't beat a cheetah. Tiger stalks with shiny eyes and takes its prey by swift surprise. A flying zebra. It's a cinch if you are a zebra finch. It must be hard to yell when zebras join their friends where one zebra starts and another zebra ends. A mandrel baboon. Mandrel's face is blue striped and hairy. Some find it attractive, others find it scary. A nice thing about a butterfly is that it adds a spot of color to our habitat. I love the butterfly um, garden at the, at the zoo. It's just so pretty and warm in there. A giraffe's neck is so tall that it towers over all. And that's a pretty cool adaptation for giraffes to be able to reach all of the food they eat. Animal appearances serve many functions. The ability to blend in with the natural surroundings through color or pattern can protect animals from predators. A gathering of zebras disrupts the shape of each individual animal and confuses a predator, as does a school of fish. Cool. So she talks all about the adaptations too. Hope you enjoyed looking at some different animal adaptations.